Elliott Sadler, then they leave on the restart well, then they can side draft, and I think they can stay there. Once again, into the Geico restart zone. Blaney and Sadler making up row one. Cedric Elliott in row two. See that gap between the one car and the 23 car of Chase Elliott, that is not what they need. They need to be almost hitting each other to stay close to that inside line. Now they're hooked up. Not legally hooked they're up. They're just bumping. <laughs> they're just bumping. They can't hook bumpers. They can't stay connected or they'll get a black flag. But you see the shove. Now Elliott Sadler with a big run, but he has no help behind him. Oh, as Elliott gets to that right rear quarter panel, he's there. He got that right rear quarter panel and pulled the 22 of Blaney back to him. Now he's hoping the 23 can get to him to push him in front of the lead. Almost cleared him. Didn't and right quite back, get it done. here comes Blaney with the same thing, side drafting him, trying to pull him back. But here comes the 23. Chase Elliott now trying to bump that one up front. And now Elliott out in front. Hang a left, Elliott. I, I, if I'm Chase Elliott right now, I'm sorry, if I'm Elliott Sadler, I'm hanging a left. I am leaving the guy that just helped me. I'm going to go to whatever lane's the fastest. I know he helped me get to the lead, but right now it's about me winning the race. It's hard to decide, though, because both lanes look great. There's a lot of cars forming on the outside line. It's got the tighter, you know, the tighter bumper to bumper action, and that's where the energy is going to be coming from, Jeff. That's what the spotter's trying to tell, but he goes to the bottom here as the bottom line starts to form. It's going to keep changing, and that information from the spotter is really critical right now to give Elliott the information he needs to be able to pull up in front of the line that has the energy, because he needs that energy. They're going to shove him forward. He'll jump in front of the 23 here, get a push. You see him push his car away. He also stalls that 23. That gives him a chance to get back down the bottom, maybe get a push from the inside line. And you said got a push. They never touched. Is there a, that invisible air bumper that yeah. we've been seeing we always call it the beach ball effect imagine yeah. a giant beach ball in between the cars and and when when the 22 if they you know there is a, a chance when they they kind of pop that beach ball and you get to the bumper but if that doesn't happen you can't get shoved away by the car behind you and that what? beach ball stays intact that's the goal of building a good speedway car we talk about how well it pulls up to the car you want a car that can drive through that beach ball and get all the way to their bumper because that way you can pull out the pass before you help the car in front of you. People think we're crazy, but that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like a giant beach ball in between you and the car behind you, and, and you want that to stay there. And that's what Elliott needs to be moving in front of both lines to get the shove and get the momentum, keep the momentum in his car so that they don't break that beach ball or break, break that bubble and get to his bumper. But it looks like that with movement like that, Oh, he got to the left rear quarter panel. Blaney yep. able to get to the inside of him, and now Blaney trying to take the lead back. But you saw the one. Elliott Sadler trying to do the side drafting once again to take the air and put it on that spoiler of the 22 to slow him down. But now that inside line forming up solid again. They're side by side for the lead. That time the gap between one and two, 18 one thousandths of a second. Elliott Sadler. Big run right there. You saw what he did. Oh, oh around goes the 60. Austin Cedric wrecking in front of the crowd. Daniel Hemrick's caught up. Tyler Reddick, Cedric, barrel rolls. See when you're done, Pablo. Lands back on his wheels. Okay, Matt Tim trying to make a lot happen. Joey Gase in the 35, sitting right up against the 60 now. Safety crews will get out to the attention of the 60, the 35. See Tyler Reddick, a lot of damage to that race car. We saw Cindric getting sideways as he was coming through the trioval. Joey Gase in the 35 looked like he was trying to drive away from that wreck. Sure enough, he does. And now the safety crew gets to Austin Sendrick. A wild ride for the 19-year-old. See a lot more damage. 
the right front of Joey Gase as he's been able to pull away from this wreck. No rear deck lid on the 60. No rear bumper cover. Barrel rolling through one was Cindric. February winner, Tyler Reddick, a lot of damage to that car. Matt Tiff also involved. Great sign here. Austin Cindric climbing out of the 60. Such a promising night. Was doing a great job. This place will break your heart. I think you'll have a shot to win this race, and then you find yourself flipping through the corner. That's Daytona. So you see right here, you enter the corner. It's up the racetrack a little bit. Matt Tiff's going to try to drive in there to get to his inside, and they just got together. 60 of Austin Cindric just wasn't on the very bottom of the racetrack. Opened up a little bit of hole that Matt Tiff was, you thought was there, and then you see right here the contact with Reddick. Started Cindric flipping. That's very unusual to see a car flip that late after initial impact. So here we go above. Well, Jeff, you knew it was just a matter of time. It was trying to get really bunched up too wide, and Matt Tiff thought it's under 20 to go. He had to make a lane. You see that tumble, as you mentioned, really rough for the 60 car, but basically Matt Tiff thought it was time to try to make it three wide, and we've seen that before, Dale, out of the tri-oval. If that inside road doesn't protect the double yellow line, that's a place that people get runs, but that was late into the corner for Matt Tiff to look underneath the 60. There, yeah, that's, that is a late move, and it's difficult to be able to you know, for the spotter to give that information to the 60 we're in, we're in that he's got a car underneath him. But there was room there. There was room to go, and, and Matt decided that that was the move he wanted to make. You. you see right there, there's a little bit of a hole. It looks like he has room to go to the bottom. And when he went to go, it just closed up. And, you know, we always like to point a finger and say, this guy messed up or that guy messed up. And many times it's just racing. I mean, it's people going for a spot. This is the Front seat end. that I wonder, low, low, guys, low, low, as we low, low, ride low, low, along with Custer. You see a little, coming, little contact low, there, low, but low, I think inside, inside, inside. Go high he now, doesn't know where the 21 is going to go. <laughs> so, I mean, all day you ride in line back there. Here you go. This yeah. is the helmet cam. What a great shot. As a driver there, you just you just get up high and try. Hope that they don't come up the track into you. If you're way behind the wreck, you try to slow down without locking down the front tires and sliding into the crash. Wild action under red flag. We'll be right back.